Today's material is going to look very similar to what we were working with yesterday. Today we're talking about surface area and volume of cylinders. And it's very similar to what we did with prisms. So yesterday we talked about right prisms and oblique prisms. Today, this is an, a right cylinder and an oblique cylinder. Okay, nothing special there, right? Mm -hmm. Nothing to write down, just want you to see what they both look like. Okay? Then yesterday we talked about lateral area and surface area of a prism. Today we're talking about lateral area and surface area of a cylinder. So first of all, what kind of base does a cylinder have? A circle. Okay, so a circular, which means there are no edges, right? So that face is like the label on a soup can, okay? That face is your lateral area. So if we tore that label off and measured it, that's what we're talking about when we're talking about the lateral area of the can or the cylinder. And when we add the two bases to it, that's what we're talking about when we want to know the whole surface area. Okay, not just where the label is, but the top and the bottom as well. How much can, how much aluminum are we using to make that can? Okay? So our formulas will translate nicely. So yesterday when we talked about lateral area, we were talking about the faces that connect the two bases. In this case, it's the label that connects the top and the bottom of the can. Okay? Exactly. Graphic artists. Yeah. So the lateral area yesterday was L, and it was equal to capital P times H. What did capital P stand for? The perimeter. So what's the perimeter of a circle? 360 degrees in a circle. But what's the perimeter of a circle? <coughs> Radius times pi squared. Radius squared times pi. Almost. Almost. That's the area, right? So we want to take we want to know how far around is it? When you're looking for the how far around is it, you're looking for the not the area, but the circumference. So when you're looking for the area of that base. You're going to be using 2 times pi times r times h for the circumference of that base, the perimeter of the base. We take that times the height, we've got the lateral area. Yep, 2 times pi times r times h. Okay? Okay. And. When we want the total surface area, we want not just the label of the can, but we want the top and the bottom as well. So we have to take that lateral area and add two bases. How do we find the area of a circle? Oh, pi r squared. Pi r squared. The area of a circle is pi r squared. Isn't a cylinder just a bunch of smaller circles? Yes. Oh, yeah, you can fill it here and fill it up with a whole bunch of circles back here. All right. Okay. So the lateral area plus two bases plus two pi r squares will give you the total surface area. So that translates into two pi r h plus 2 pi r squared. So write it down. 2 pi r h plus 2 pi r squared. All right. 
right, so let's see this in action. What is the radius of that circle? I'm going to give it seven. What's the radius 11. of your base? 11. What's the height of your cylinder? 10. So to find the lateral area. Wait, how can the little circle be bigger than the whole thing? It's not the seal. All right. Okay. To find that, we're going to find the perimeter, which is the circumference. The perimeter of a circle is the circumference of it. So we have to remember that C equals 2 pi r from earlier in the chapter. So we're going to take 2 times pi times 11. So Nate, what's 2 times pi times 11? What's 2 times 11? 22. Okay, so we'll write this in terms of pi and leave it in terms of pi. There's nothing wrong with leaving in terms of pi. Okay. And in order to find the lateral area, we need to take that 22 pi times the height of the cylinder, which is 10, right? So what's 22 times 10? 225. You don't have to. If you want to multiply it in because it feels better and you like to multiply it in, you can. This is just a more accurate answer because we have it done under rows of any rounding. Okay. Now we need to find the total area. To find the total area, we take that lateral area, but we have and we have to find a base. I think on your sheet it says base first, and we double that base. So how do we find the base? Well, the base is nothing more than the area of a circle pi r squared. So my radius is 11. I'm going to take pi times 11 squared, 121. So one base is 121 pi. When I want to find the whole surface area, T for total surface area, I take that lateral area I just found and I add two bases. So I take the 220 pi and I add on two of these bases that are 121 pi. Wait, so that is your answer. If you, if you want to multiply pi in, you can, but that's the better answer. It's simple because we haven't had to pick up a calculator thus far. Mm -hmm. Pi times 11 squared. What is the answer for that? Let's do the 22 pi. That's just 22 pi. Okay. Okay. You can leave the pi in. You don't, you don't have to. If you prefer to write it out, to multiply it out, you can. So now 22 pi, 220 pi plus, what's 121 times 2? Sorry, I thought someone said. 242. So 242 pi. 220 plus 242 is a total of? 462. 462 meters squared. Okay. If you prefer to multiply that pi in, and you've done so along the way, you'll end up with 1,451.5. So if you wanted the real answer, you just take that from the base pi. Yep. Okay. If you want to see it as in it as a decimal. Okay. The perimeter is nothing more than the circumference, and that's what we're using that circumference formula. Okay. Okay. All right. So one more example to make sure we know how to do these. 
So we have a lateral area, one more lateral area total surface area. Make sure we know how to do these for cylinders. Okay. This time we have 2.5 feet for my radius, and we have 8 feet for the height. Okay. So to find this, we need to first find L. So how do we find the perimeter of the circumference? I thought L was the height. pH. Okay. So we have to find pH. That means that we have to calculate the circumference of that circle and take it times the 8. 2 pi r h. Okay. So we plug in 2 times pi times 2.5. And 2.5 times 2 is 5. Five, so 5 pi is my C, or my P. So L is nothing more than that P times the H. So 5 pi times 8 gets us what? What is that? 40 pi. 40 pi. Wait, what is it? 5 times 4. I said 5 pi times 8. 5 times 8. It's 40 pi. Okay, that's one of our answers. Box it in so we know. Okay, now we've got to find the area of one base. To find the area of one base, we have to find pi r squared. So our radius is 2.5. If I take pi times 2.5 squared, 25 times 25 is 625. So this will be 6.25. That's one base. I need two bases, so I'm going to double it. <coughs> the total surface area is that perimeter times the height plus two of those bases. Like 12.5. So the 40 pi from up above plus 12.5 pi, which is 52.5 pi. is feet squared. And if you prefer to see it in um, with the pi multiplied in, you'll get 165. Hopefully quite a bit. All right, we're good. Now, just like yesterday, volume's going to be easier. We just we did the hardest part here. Because volume is equal to area of the base times the height, like yesterday. Okay, it's the amount of space it takes up. So it's 165 what? Um, that was uh, feet squared. Okay. So your volume is going to be your area of your base times the height of the cylinder. And you told me a, the base is a circle. To find the area of a circle, we take pi r squared. So I'm going to take pi times, what's the radius? Uh, four. four. I'm going to take that times 4 and square it. And then I need to take it times the height. What's the height of the cylinder? 12 centimeters tall. 12. Again, this was not to scale. So what's 4 squared? 16. And 16 times 12? It's like 196. Is I guess. Okay. It is 192. That's so close. And volume is measured in centimeters square cubed if it's centimeters. So units cubed. Wait, if you actually do that, what did you get? 603.2. We get 603.2. Okay. 
if you decide to multiply the pi and add pi. Make sense? So the answer, I, I prefer to see 192 pi, but if you give me 603.2 cubic centimeters, that's when I take pi times it, yep. You multiply pi and you'll get 603.2. Okay. One more volume pro problem, but first let's talk about Cavalieri's principle. Just like yesterday, it doesn't matter if we slide all those circles over and make them lean, you're still going to have the same volume, okay? The most important point, though, is to make sure you use the right height. Yes, sir. Uh, if you stretch it, you make it bigger. Well, actually, not necessarily, because you might add more to it, more air and so forth, and it's rubbery. Okay? But sliding those cylinder, those um, circles over is not going to impact the volume of the, of the cylinder. So, volume, area of the base times the height, or pi r squared h. <coughs> the key here is to find the right height. So what's my radius? Uh, three. So three squared. <coughs> what's my height? Five. We want the perpendicular height, not the slant height. Okay, so what's three squared? Nine. Nine. Nine times five is? Forty-five. So we get forty-five pi. Whatever units it is cubed. Let's make it a triangle. And if you prefer to call it, to multiply pi in, you'll get 141.4 units cubed. Pi r squared height. Yep. Um, I think most of the um, worksheets and so forth that I'll give you will say one decimal point. Okay. okay. You gave me two, that's fine too. All right, so we need to talk about two more quick things. Partial cylinder. Okay. How much of that cylinder do we have? We have about 90 degrees. Three fourths. Out. Three fourths. Okay, you can look at that and you can tell me immediately three fourths. Why is it three fourths? 90 okay. degrees is gone, right? 90 is half of 180, which is half of 360. Good. 90 is half of 180, which is half of 360. Okay. So three fourths of it's there, one fourth of it is gone. Okay? If we had to say how many degrees do we have left? Out of 360, if 90's gone, how much is left? Like 270. 270. And that's where you're getting this from. You're sitting, you're, you basically have 270 out of 360. That's three fourths. Okay? What's that as a percent? Uh, 75. 75%. What's that as a decimal? 0. 0.75. 0. 0.75. So we don't have a full so cylinder. Out of 100 if you want to yes. yes, we have 0. 0.75 of that volume. So we only want 0.75 of our area of our base times our height. Because we only have 3 fourths or 75% or 0.75 of our whole cylinder or 270 out of 360. All of those things are the same. Would that be the same have Yep, you'll do this do the same thing. Okay, we may have a wedge of cheese. It's only a quarter of a, of the cylinder, one fourth. Okay. So what's my radius? Four. So four squared is. And what's my height? So ten times sixteen is. 160, three fourths of 160. That's 90. That's like 120. Because if you don't have your calculator handy, you may want to change it to a fraction and say what's 160 divided by 4. It can be 
Um, the 120 is 3 fourths of 160. 160 divided by 4 is 40, and 40 times 3 is 120. Okay. And once again, if you prefer to put that into a decimal form, I don't have it in front of me, but you can multiply it by pi. Um, you can multiply by 0.75 or multiply by 3 and divide by 4. Is it going to be squared? Cute. It's volume again. Did you get 6, 7, 14, 7, 5, Okay, so it's 160 came from the R squared. R squared is 16 times pi times the height of the stack. Okay. So that's the 16 times the 10 gave us the 160. Like the point like as a decimal from the beginning. Either one. If you have your calculator handy, you can take 0.75 times the 160. If you don't have a calculator handy, you can say 3 fourths. I know 16 goes into 4 four times, and 40 times 3 is 120. Mental math when the calculator's not handy. Um, R squared was 4 squared. We good? All right, last example. We can also give you a problem where we give you the volume or the surface area or the lateral area and have a missing side. And we want to know what that side is. So in this case, we have a cylinder. We know its volume is 231 centimeters. And we know the radius, but we don't know the height. Okay. So, what's the formula for volume? V equals VA. VH. And what's the area of the base for a circle? Uh, three. Three squared. R squared H. So, they told us the volume. We're going to plug that into V. We know pi. We know our radius is. We're going to square that, and we don't know the height. So you're just going to divide by pi by square root by 7. So we're going to take the 3.5 squared, which is what? 7. 12.25. So 12.25. Pi times h equals 231. But I need to get the h all by itself. So what do I have to do to get the h all by itself? Divide. So we want to divide it by the 12.25 and also by the pi to get it all by itself. Now your calculator understands the order of operations, so you have to be careful here. We're dividing by two things. That means that we need to write or type in 231 divided by and start a parenthesis because we wanted to divide by both of these guys, 12.25 times pi. Close your parenthesis. Or make it two division problems. 231 divided by 12.25 equals divided by pi equals. So then you just put six? Six is your answer. Okay. It was a times. So I was showing you on the calculator the buttons if you would push. Okay. That didn't mean to introduce a variable, it's just a time sign. Let me make it bigger so it looks like a time sign. 
So we're working on it. Let me stop my recording. How you doing?